So, so far we have been discussing the use of things like loans and debt financing and mortgages. So the other side of the coin is equity financing. If we go back to something called the accounting equation, the accounting equation is assets equals the sum of all the liabilities and the equity of the business. So assets are the resources. So when you make investments in the business assets, you can leverage it, finance it one of two ways, liabilities or equity. Liabilities being you have to pay that back as a loan with interest to the lender. Equity is the owners. The owners put up their own money. So we want to see a combination of both and that's what we would want to see in most businesses and depending on what kind of businesses you're in, like mining oil and gas, you may see a lot of debt, but for software companies and high tech companies, you may see a lot of equity. So this mix of liabilities and equity will vary quite a bit between what kind of company or industry you're dealing with. But in this lesson, let's talk about this other side, which we have not talked about, is equity financing, which means we're going to have owners put in their own money. Now, there, the, there are some advantages to this, and there are some disadvantages to, to this. And one of the biggest disadvantages is when you have equity financing, it can take a lot of forms and structure. So it can be rather complex. So if you have a partnership, you may not be able to easily bring in a new equity owner or partner into the business. You've got to go out and find that. You may have to change the partnership agreements for that business. So when you do equity financing, it can be considerably more complex. You may be dealing with a private equity group or maybe a specific type of individual investor, such as an angel investor, someone who is kind of has a relationship with the business owners who will kind of help put some money in to get the business back up and running. Now with this complexity also comes maybe with a little bit of less control. So if you're used to controlling and managing and making decisions in your business, when you bring in more owners or change the uh, equity ownership, ownership structure of the company, now you're dealing with more people who are going to actually exert some control over your company. So when I say it becomes complex, not only are we talking about the structure, in other words, could it be an angel investor or a partner, what are we talking about? It can take many different forms, but it can be complex in terms of how the organization or company actually is run and managed, because now you've got more owners involved, so that makes it more complex. So it can have, uh, that's one of the disadvantages. It's not very easy to arrange and do. Uh, for, for public companies, it even can be a challenging once they get past their initial public offering. It can also be more costly. And the reason it's more costly is because when people put money into a business, they have an expectation at some point of cashing out and getting back a return on their money. So most people are not going to put money into a business unless they get something back. And what they expect to get back can be a very high rate of return, well in excess of 10%, 15%. So it not only is equity financing somewhat more complex than debt financing, but compared to debt liability financing, it is much more costly because the rate of return required by the equity owner is much higher than the interest rate that's paid back to the bank. So when you compare those two, equity financing is considerably more costly. And then when you also attract more people to invest in your business, you really have got to have some real strong upside potential to the business so that if that equity owner comes in and puts more money into your business, it can take you to a much higher level. It can get you more market share. You have a back order of orders you can't fill. So you've got real strong demand and you can't fill that. You, you can't keep up. So there's strong demand or upside potential to really grow the company. So one of the things that has to be in play within your company is you, if you have a company that's very mature and just rocking along,
and it's not really doing much and it's not it's very mature and there's a lot of competition there's not much room for growth then you may have a lot of difficulty attracting equity investors and getting equity financing so there has to be some really good strong upside potential to your business going forward not only that but it's also useful to have a very defensible financial projection to, to present to those equity owners. So there's a lot of things you have to go through to arrange this equity financing. There's a lot of things you have to have in play to uh, make sure that you can secure this equity financing. Not easy to do. Now there's some very good advantage. These are disadvantages. But let's talk about some, there are some advantages to equity financing. Even though it is costly, it's hard to do, the one thing is you're not required to go back and pay somebody some money. So once they invest, their money is at risk. So there is no required repayment. You don't have to repay, you don't have to make dividend payments. You don't have to, you're not required to make any kind of payment to pay back that investment, unlike debt, where you have to make regular payments to, to literally get the principal and the interest down over time and pay it back. And once you pay it all back, then you're in the clear. I mean, when you have debt financing, there is, they're not, the bank, if you have a loan with the bank, they're not going to exert any control over your company. You get to run the company however you want to. So there's no, you know, there's no change in control or ownership. With the with equity owners, they're going to come in and help you run the company and maybe have their opinions voiced. But the advantage is you don't have to pay them back. Another big advantage, when you take on more liabilities and debt, you have a required fixed payment that you have to meet. Under equity financing, you don't. So it preserves cash flow. It enables you to take those earnings, those profits, and pay it back to the owners. So there's a lot less risk. So if you take on a lot more debt, from the business perspective, your business risk goes up with more debt because you've got to make those payments. So again, unless you have strong growth potential, you really need to kind of think about something like a mix of debt and equity financing. Debt financing is appropriate where you have good moderate growth, good strong cash flow, maybe you're in a mature business. But when you take on more debt, that's a lot more risk. and less debt, less risk. So if I bring in more equity financing into the business, I'm in effect lowering the risk by taking less debt. That means my balance sheet now has more equity and more proportional equity in it than in debt financing. So now my business risk has gone down. So I've reduced my I've reduced the risk because now I have a less proportion of debt because I've in effect transfer the risk to the owners who put up the money. But therein lies why it costs so much. So why does it cost so much? Because these new equity owners have taken on the risk. The business isn't taking on the risk. It doesn't have to repay it back. But the owners, the new owners who put their money in, they're at risk. They've taken on a lot of risk, so they're going to require a very you know, substantial return on their investment, so it's much more costly. Higher risk, higher return. That's why this is more costly, equity financing. And that's very dramatic between a public company and a private company. For example, if we compare a privately held company versus a public company, let's say the private company curve is in, it's in red, and these are the publicly traded companies in blue. So if we have both private and public companies and they go out and fund a long-term investment or they're going to finance the business with nothing but debt then their cost is pretty close maybe the privately held company has to pay a little bit higher because it is a little bit higher risk but it has cash flow it has growth it has customers it has an ability it has the ability to repay that debt back so does the publicly traded company but as you move the mix the mix between debt to equity and we're going to move from 100% debt and we're going to put in more and more and more and more equity and more equity and more equity until we get way out here and when it's all financed with equity what happens is 
the cost, the cost of all this capital, debt and equity that we put into the business, the cost for a privately held company goes way up, goes much, much higher because the risk of default, the, the, fact, the fact that this privately held company could fail and not pay it back, not return, give a return back to these owners because there's so much risk involved. These equity owners require such a high rate of return that it raises our overall cost of capital for the company, for the private held company versus the publicly traded held company where it's not quite as high, not nearly as high. So there's a real divergence between this overall cost of capital between debt and equity financing private versus publicly held companies. So these are the things you have to think about. It's a lot to think about. But and again, like I said, it depends a lot on the company, the maturity of the company, the growth potential of the company, what industry you're in. There's a lot of things. You have to basically weigh the cost versus the benefit and the risk. And if you can sit down with financial people and figure that out, then you can start to plan for this. And again, we're going to talk later on in part two of this course about well, what is the right capital structure for a company and can we kind of figure that out based on things like earnings and stuff. And in part two of this course we're going to discuss how to figure this out.